Uh, hi everyone, I'm here to talk to you about uh, float type to write uh, safer and smarter JavaScript. So, I'm a Zuntech. I work actually on a secret project. Uh, it's not public yet. I do ja uh, JavaScript with React Native, so a bit of Java and Objective C2. I use a gRPC, Go Mobile, and I write and do podcasts with a putain de code. So what's the JS problem? Uh, it's a dynamic, weak, uh, weak typing language. Or it crashes at runtime, and it's very hard to reason about, especially when we work on a team. And what is flow type? A possible solution created by Facebook. Um, it's a static type checker. It's a project that started in uh, 2013 and open sourced uh, the year after. It's written in OCaml, a French language, and it's currently uh, in uh, version 0 0.59. Oh, it differs from TypeScript. Uh, it's completely optional. You can mix, uh, you can mix an, uh, JavaScript and type a JavaScript in one file if you want. It's Grave-based and not uh, AST-based, so it doesn't work through your file. It understands your file and it traces function call. It has no compiler. It's a server that type checks your code. So auto getting task. You just have to do an npm install, flow bin, flow remove type. You can use Babel plugin if you want. You use flow in it and flow. That's all. It works with a favorite compiler, uh, uh, compiler editor. You can use Atom, VS Code uh, for better UX experience. You have another plugin if you want, but uh, this is all the fun. This is the best. To start a new project, you can define uh, in your flow config file, or you are true, it will type check or your file. And if you want to add flow in your current project, you can use a command on every file, uh, a pragma command, add flow on top of each. So after that, uh, flow will understand your type, just type inference. So in this example, uh, I don't, uh, I don't uh, add an annotation on name, but it clearly understands that name is a string and it's written in the function written a string. Say hello written a string. Uh, with, uh, with TypeScript and uh, the no impl uh, implicit any option uh, set to false, you will have to, uh, to add uh, an annotation on name to prevent the possible error. So what do you have? You have a primitive type. You already know them, number, string, boolean, null, void, void is undefined. Literal types, you can assign a value to a type. So it's on the number on this slide because uh, x is equal to x, obviously. You can reuse type with type aliases. Uh, and import and export them. And uh, if you start with flow, um, a good start is to put all your, your type in one file for a project and import from, from it. So I say literal type, I dump, but there are dump uh, if you use like, uh, if you use them uh, without union type. I'm such a um, You can use union type, which are types that say it's a type, or a type, or a type. So in this example, color is black or white. If you, um, if you use get foreground color with pink, pink is not defined as a color. So it will, uh, it will say there's an error. You have maybe type, 
which means optional value. Is his name might be a string, so you have to type check that name is not null before doing something. You have generic types, the type values types. So in this example, um, my generic type, it's not, uh, it's not a good title. <laughs> Just realized uh, it's, it's a, I know, no, it's a good title. Um, my generic type is array. Array is a, an array of type user. User are object type, exact object type of ID, string, and name string. So in this example, the second, um, the second object in the array does not have name, so it will say there's an error. You have a lot of built-in generics available. Array, map, which take two params, uh, sets, and promise. And over and over. You can do object typing. Um, in this example, uh, I said my object user as a first name and a pseudo. But if I want to add uh, another information like age, which is uh, a number, um, you can totally spread in it. I think we say I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay with that. So. To the rescue, you have exact object type. You can seal and ensure um, the structure of your object by using this, um, this syntax with a pipe. And after doing that, if you want to spread another thing in, a, in my type user, in my uh, object with type user, it will say, now, nah, user doesn't have any age, which is dumb math. <laughs> you can merge object type. So like in JavaScript, uh, you have spread. You can spread a type object in avatar, another type object. So A as foo and bar, B as bar, which is a Boolean. So it will override. With spreading as uh, a spread, type spread of A and B. So A is, uh, foo is a string and bar is a Boolean. You can use uh, objects like JavaScript map uh, by setting a uh, type annotation on a key and type annotation on a value. And after that, uh, all, uh, all the properties as to, have, uh, to be number. Uh, interesting thing, you can create uh, read and write only properties. Uh, with a uh, uh, covariant and contravariant interface. Uh, in this example, I use uh, the plus sign uh, to say this, this property is read only. I use the minus sign to say this property is write only. So, like you can see in the example, uh, when the property is invariant, no problem. I can read it, I can write it. When the property is covariant, you can read it, but you can write it. And where the property is contravariant, you can't write it. You can't read it, but you can write it. <laughs> so a neat trick for that and a, a clearer example is uh, to force immutability in object. You just have to put a plus sign uh, in front of every property you want immutable. So after that, if I want to modify, in this example, uh, first name in my object, I can't because the property is immutable. I have to recreate a new object uh, with uh, a new first name. So it's extremely convenient if you use Redux. Classes. Uh, in flow, uh, classes are also type, so you don't have to write interface for that. You just have to uh, write your, your classes and use it as a type. So in this example, I only write a classes called movie, and I can use movie as a type, and I can instantiate a new movie. So if you use Re React, Re React, uh, like uh, in TypeScript, you can validate uh, your props 
and your state. Uh, it's currently safer if you use exact, uh, exact object uh, types. Another great example uh, is to use a um, union type to, uh, to making impulsive state impossible. Uh, in this example, I use generic to represent uh, an API call response. And uh, the API call might be loading, or it might be loaded with a value of type T, or it might be an error with an error of type error. You have some utility type, like keys, it's just an example. Uh, you create an object, you want to create a type from the keys of your object, you just use keys, keys type of country. We create a new type with US on alpha value. You have real near array. If you use this utility on a array of number example, uh, it will create an immutable array. You can push in it. You can add new value to it. You have element type. We uh, to pick uh, a type from an existing element. So in this example, I re I pick uh, the second found the the type at index one in a, in my type table. So it's boolean. And there's a lot more. You can even uh, program at tap level with plan. You have a CLI to search and fetch uh, type definition because Flow is a moving project, so it will vendorize uh, all the definition in your project. And you can use it with uh, all the library you use every day, like Lodash, etc. Flow can obviously do a lot more, but I hope uh, you will give it a try. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Uh, something that I find annoying as a library author, author that is when I want to type my library, that I need to write it both in Flow and in TypeScript, at least a definition for for users. Do you know anything to um, like transform one in the other or uh, just to make your life simpler? Yeah, uh, actually you have a, a neat project called uh, Flowgen, uh, which take a TypeScript definition and generate flow, flow definition. Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, why you uh, you uh, choose uh, Typeflow uh, versus uh, TS? Uh, because for me, TypeScript is a new language um, with a compiler. It's not optional. Yeah. Um, so if I want to use a new language, I will use Reason. Uh, but uh, actually, in my code base, uh, Flow is good enough. It infer a lot for me, so if my colleagues are lazy and just want, don't want to write the uh, type annotation, Flow could understand the uh, their work. Yep. Yeah, but uh, if you make uh, some quality in your code base, uh, you need to use uh, now uh, yep. already for uh, people type Flow. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, but Flow has a uh, code coverage yeah. and. Uh, Ever. So if it, it if it is able to understand at best uh, the code you write, it will say, okay, this code is not covered, but I can infer property for them. It, it can trust a function call. So if you have an array of anything and add thing in this array letter, it will be uh, uh, um, it will understand that. It will say, okay, it, after that it add a number and a string and uh, okay, it's an array of number of things. It traces its score. Okay. So um, if for code quality, it's better to write type annotation, mm. but as an- You miss, you can miss. Uh, yeah, 
it's, a, it's a great solution to start. When you have a, a big uh, project, you yeah. can, uh, you can yeah. move. Uh, it's slower. way it's way easier to add flow in a big project yeah. than TypeScript. Okay, thank you.